So hello and welcome to another episode of Top 10s. I'm your interim host, Carl Smallwood, and today we're talking about 10 stunning reasons teachers have been fired. And just as a personal aside, I actually originally trained to be a teacher until it was pointed out to me that maybe Mr. Smallwood isn't the best name to um, uh, you know, inspire confidence and respect in the classroom. So I thought I'll write scripts for YouTube videos instead. And as always, the script this video is based on was submitted to us by a member of our writing team. This will mean Ian Forty. Links to their socials can be found below alongside my own. Being a teacher is, for many, a calling. Helping educate children is a tremendous responsibility, but it's not a job anyone can do. At least, it's not a job that anyone should do, but sometimes beggars can't be choosers and school boards hire whoever shows up with a diploma. All you bullies get out of my way, cause I am really ticked off. That has led to several outrageous stories of teachers who went well beyond their job descriptions and ended up getting fired as a result. Lest we forget though, there's also the flip side to this coin, because of the influence of things like politics, parents, red tape, and just all around bad ideas, sometimes a good teacher will get fired for just as unbelievable a reason. Reason. Let's take a look at 10 of the most outrageous examples of both. Starting with number 10, a teacher was fired for writing a blog on homophones. So what's your opinion on homophones? Tim Torkildson was working as a school media strategist for the Noman Global Language Center, an ESL school in Utah. Part of his job was making blog posts about topics relevant to ESL students. That included explaining parts of the English language like homophones. As anyone aware of what homophones are might expect, the blog post dealt with words that sounded similar but had different meanings. You know there, there, and there, for example. Torkilton's boss may have neglected to actually read the blog or just remember what they learned in school because they called him and told him he was fired for posting something that people might think supported the gay agenda. That's a direct quote. According to Torkilton, the owner of the company called him into his office after he posted the blog and summarily fired him. The owner refuted this later, saying it was just because his blogs went off on tangents. We've all been there. That said, they still removed the blog post and the owner said the concept was too complex for their students anyway. It's just words that sound the same. Like, but have a different meaning. There, there, and that is so... Oh God, the education system's a joke. Number nine, a substitute teacher was fired for getting dating advice. It's important for teachers to separate their work life from their personal life. This can be hard because they may spend more hours per week with their students than they do their own families. You can build a genuine closeness there and that leads to some teachers openly talking about their own lives, which is not always a good idea. For example, a substitute teacher in New York who clearly didn't have a history of familiarity with her students to fall back on as an excuse, was fired for soliciting dating advice from fourth graders. According to reports, the 45-year-old woman had the children help her act out dating scenarios where the students would play the potential male partner on a date and she would play herself. For what it's worth, it wasn't suggested that she was doing anything unseemly with the students, i.e. anything to involve sex, but she was having them offer advice on who she should date between two men and which qualities in men were ones she should look for as she was dealing with a man she described as a jerk. When the school board learned of what she'd done, she was let go and we never found out which of those two men she chose. Number eight, a Florida teacher was fired for having students write obituaries before an active shooter drill. It's hard to relate to the school experience kids have these days if you're an adult, especially if, like myself, you're an adult who lives in the UK. Most adults never have to deal with things like active shooter drills, which are commonplace all across American schools. Kids really shouldn't have to practice for how to avoid dying at school, but they do and one Florida teacher decided to make it just a little bit worse. So students at the Dr. Phillips High School in Orlando were scheduled to have an active shooter drill, which is a thing that happens now. Psychology teacher Jeffrey Keane decided to make it just a little bit worse though and gave all the students an assignment to write their own obituaries ahead of time. His reasoning, reasoning, I'm using that word very liberally here, uh, was that in light of the drill, it would give the students a chance to reflect on what they'd achieved and what was most important to them in their lives. Before the day had finished, he was fired. The school said that he was let go for giving an inappropriate assignment about school violence. Keane said that he didn't regret giving the assignment because he felt it important to talk real to kids in that environment, and it's something that they were already talking about anyway. We'll let you be the judge of how appropriate that was down in the comments, alongside arguing about gun violence in schools, because that's just a thing that happens when you talk about this subject online. Number seven, Anne Stewart was fired for being a witch. History has not been kind to people accused of being witches, whether they 
they were hung or crucified or put on scales opposite a duck, which is a thing that happened apparently. They were often presumed guilty until proven innocent. Even up to the 1970s, they were being subjected to some harsh treatments, even if that didn't include outright murder. For example, consider Anne Stewart, who was fired from her position as a teacher in Tucson, Arizona in 1971, which led to an event that even has its own Wikipedia page called the Flowing Wells Witch Trial. So Stewart was fired for, among other things, teaching students about witchcraft, being a witch herself, being insubordinate, a poor influence on students, causing mental stress to other teachers, and teaching outside of the stated curriculum. In her defence, Stuart stated that she'd never told anyone that she was a witch, just that she had the characteristics of one and the students had ran with it. It was the principal of the school who made the ethics complaint about her, and she was later dismissed indefinitely because of it. And that's the thing as well. If you legitimately, genuinely believe that someone is a witch with magical powers, why would you like go out of your way to cross them and make a personal enemy of them? You're just gonna get cursed. On the bright side, Stuart was a tenured teacher and the school did not follow the proper procedure for dismissing her from her position. And that allowed her to sue and sue she did. And the courts forced the school to give her a job back though it's not clear how things progressed from that. Maybe she used her magic powers to just erase all memory of that event. Say goodbye to your memories. Number six, an Oklahoma teacher was fired after taking students on a Walmart run. It's no secret that teachers often buy supplies out of their own pocket for their classrooms, but they also do a lot of extra work in their own time, like prepping, planning, grading. But they're still expected to make the most of their class time with students. This was not something Oklahoma teacher Heather Cagle was seemingly all that good at. In 2014, Cagle was fired after she took her students on a run to Walmart to get some snacks which already seems like a poorly thought out plan since getting snacks isn't really part of a school day, but it gets worse. Cagle only had a Honda Accord to get her and her 11 students to the Walmart. Feel free to Google the interior of a Honda Accord if you want to guess how many people it holds, or just look at this picture we're gonna put behind us. But suffice to say, it's not 11 plus a driver, so Cagle stuffed two of her students in the trunk and clown card the other nine into the Accord. When the school board found out, they voted four to one to have her fired which is more terrifying that one person thought that was okay. So for four people that want to go golfing or go on a trip, ample room to put all their gear in the back. Number five, a Norwegian teacher had students playing with her blood. What's the grossest thing you can imagine a teacher doing with their students that isn't obviously overtly criminal? If it involves tasting blood, you've come to the right point in the video. So a Norwegian teacher brought in a vial of her own blood for students aged three to six to taste and taste it they did. Word is that as many as a dozen students had a sample after the teacher poured it onto a plate and started a Dracula style buffet for them. The students were invited to touch the blood, which they did, and when one asked how to clean it off their fingers, the teacher just demonstrated licking it off her own finger. So the kids all did the same thing. The teacher was, unsurprisingly, fired shortly thereafter and tested for diseases like AIDS and hepatitis. And it gets just a little bit worse for the parents because by the time the story was published, the results of the test hadn't come back yet. But authorities tried to offer some reassurance by pointing out the chance for disease transmission was low. Yeah. Number four, a teacher was fired for letting students use a classroom closet for sex. Every school has the cool teacher, the one who relates to students better than anyone else. Maybe they're just young and more in touch, or maybe they're just really easy or let you watch movies in class. Or maybe they were like one math and science teacher called Quinton Wright who let kids have sex with each other in a classroom closet, which is less cool and more criminal. Criminal. Wright, who also coached basketball, was letting students schedule times when they could go to the class and make use of the closet when no one else was there. It was sort of like an in-class Airbnb, you know, for underage high school sex. He even provided condoms, so it's not even like you could deny he was doing it for that reason. Wright was ultimately found out when the mother of one of his 14-year-old students saw a text message between himself and her son. It turns out her son was arranging for some quality time in the sex closet, and he was fired when the news came to light. He also went on to face child molestation charges because, come on, but ended up being released on a technicality, since the detective who signed the warrant to arrest him let a different officer sign the paperwork. Number three, a teacher was fired for giving zeros to students who didn't do their work. Have you ever heard of a no zero policy? It's something some schools adopted as a way to separate behavior from academic accomplishment, a worthwhile goal that hasn't always worked out in the past. So the basic idea is that children handing in late assignments or not doing assignments at all is more linked to behavior than it is any academic failure, and that zeros were counterproductive and destructive to a child's academic growth. Some policies even say that work handed in, no matter how bad, shows a good faith attempt and should automatically get at least a 50%. So, you know, 
you can, you can kind of see where they're coming from. You don't want to destroy a kid's self-esteem, but at the same time, you can't just do no work. A sentiment echoed by Canadian teacher Lyndon Dorville, who was fired in 2014 for not complying with the school board's no zero policy. So it's not like he was grading students unfairly or anything like that. He was just giving zeros to students who hadn't given him any work to grade. Despite how logical that may sound, because of the no zero policy, he was suspended and then fired for it. Dorville did ultimately appeal the decision and won in court, and he was given all the back pay he would have received during the time he was out of work and a boost to his pension at the same time, though he didn't go back to teaching for obvious reasons. Number two, a teacher was fired for making OnlyFans videos in her classroom. Sometimes what happens in a classroom can get a teacher fired, even if it happens after hours and no students are involved. That was what happened with Amanda Peer, a teacher from Thunderbolt Middle School in Arizona, which has an awesome name. When people discovered she was moonlighting on OnlyFans and filming pornography in her classroom after hours. Despite posting content under a fake name and blocking access to the entire state, someone still found the videos and reported her. And while she technically wasn't fired for what she'd done, she did say she was forced to resign. In one statement, she said that she was given the option to resign so that nothing would be made public. But obviously, that didn't happen because a teacher making OnlyFans video in a classroom is a headline that's going to go viral. That said, her husband was fired from his job as a substitute after appearing in several other videos with her. <laughs> okay, I didn't see that coming. And I kind of respect the balls it takes to do that. I'm like, oh, God. I, I guess you kind of got her. Just, maybe they should have teamed up with that teacher with the sex closet and done it in there. Number one, a Florida teacher was fired for arranging a gang beating. You never want to hear that a teacher has put their hands on your child when you're a parent. School violence already comes in far too many forms. The last thing the world needs is for teachers to be a part of that problem. Unfortunately, it happens. In at least one case, it went above and beyond what any normal person could possibly imagine. In 2014, Drew DeHart, a woman who had been teaching for years, went out of her way to set up a 7th grader to be bullied and then physically beaten by a gang of other students. In non-middle school terms, she put out a hit on a child. The events were caught on camera and showed DeHart wrangling six 8th graders and encouraging them to go after a 7th grade student who had backtalked her. The boy apparently said he wished he could curse a teacher earlier in the day. DeHart then instructed the half dozen older boys to teach him a lesson, which is Kind of what she should have been doing, but whatever. After they held him down, punching and kicking him, the teacher allegedly told him he wasn't so tough now. And some way to teach him a lesson. I kind of wish I wore glasses so I could just do the... Anyway, DeHart later tried to claim that the boy had threatened her, but the other students backed up their classmates' account that all he did was lament not being able to curse her out. The school conducted an investigation, after which they immediately fired her, because she put a hit out on a child. <laughs> and was relishing at the thought of a child being physically assaulted by their peers. Now. So if, like myself, you've spent the majority of this video, like, fluttering in between, just complete amazement, like, bafflement, and just cringing so hard that you kind of want to curl into a ball, uh, why not leave a like on this video or a comment with uh, a story about, you know, that incident at your school? Um, no, I was going to say I'd share the one about mine, but I don't think we could get monetized if I did, so I'll just say that. If you go to my own channel, Fact Theme with Carl Smallwood, there's a couple of videos where it might get mentioned, though I struggle to recall any off the top of my head. And finally, if you, like, you, know, you want to subscribe for more content like this, do so at the links you can find below. And as a final reminder, this video is based on a script submitted by Ian Forty. Their links can also be found below. So I realised like the intro to this one, it didn't disappoint, because like, I generally like to skim these. So when I do biographics, which you know, the sister channels to top tens, I read the entire script. I read the entire script and like, you know, memorise and go through all the pronunciations and awkward like sentence structure and stuff like that. With top tens, because it's a lot like more, more short form, I like to be as surprised as you guys are. And sometimes it just knocks my socks off the stuff that's happened that I have to talk about. Like, it's wild. I'm looking forward to recording the next one. Hopefully, you're all looking forward to seeing the next one I do as well. Cheers. Have a great day.